welcome to Kick Back and Cook with Angela. Everything in the kitchen is kooky and zany and we're going to show you how no matter how kooky and zany you are, you can be a success in the kitchen just like we are. I want to introduce you to my friend Denise. She and I have known each other for about the last five years and I've never seen anybody that hates to cook just like this, like this girl does. But I love her dearly and my passion is going to be her passion come hell or high water. So, Denise, I hate to break it to you, but we are trying to show people how just anybody can cook despite how smart they are, no matter what they know and no matter what they don't know. And what better way to show people how to be a success in the kitchen other than be a blonde. So, while Denise is going and transforming her hair to blonde so that anybody dizzy, dumb, whatever the stereotype, we're going to show you that no matter who you are, does not matter, you're going to be a success in our kitchen. This show is about profiling gadgets that can make your life simpler. You don't have to take a nice skills class. All you have to know is what gadgets work and what gadgets don't work. So, what I propose is that we cook gourmet meals with gadgets that simplify your life in the kitchen. And no matter, no matter what your budget, you're going to be able to make a dynamite meal that knocks the socks off of everybody you know and it's going to send you back to the kitchen over and over again because there's nothing like positive affirmation to get you going back over and over again. Alright, Denise is now ready to join us, but before she comes on, I want to let you know that we have a list here of all of the ingredients that are going to be listed in the bruschetta pasta and also in our stuffed zucchini gondolas. So, it may be a little bit difficult to read, and if so, don't worry, it's going to be listed in the blog under episode one. Without further ado, Denise's alter ego, Marilyn Monroe. So, come on, she's already picked out an apron. As you can see, everybody that comes into my kitchen is required to wear an apron. I feel so ditzy. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> now, as you can see, you probably noticed that on Rachel Ray's show, she talks about having a trash bowl. Well, I do think that there is a very important um, key fact there. You don't want to be tra tripping over a trash can. But in my opinion, a trash bowl is just another dish to clean. So what I've always done, because I was raised by a grandmother that grew up during the Depression, is that you take a grocery bag that is left over from your grocery shopping, and you hang it on your cabinetry just right here. And as you get done with everything that needs to go in the garbage, you just put it in here. And then when you are done, you can simply take it and tie it up and any odors such as garlic or onion or anything of that nature is trapped in the bag and you're okay if you don't want to throw away your garbage until in the morning. So, we are going to hang this bag right here so that we have somewhere to put all of our garbage. Now we're going to start with the zucchini. And remember these are zucchini. Baked zucchini stuffed gondolas. This is an Italian dish. And if you haven't noticed, we have an Italian theme going on tonight. Now, Denise, what you're going to do is you're going to just wash these off a little bit. And let's get started. And as she's washing those off, you can see here that there is a rose of some sort, whatever that is. Quite frankly, it wouldn't matter if you, it wouldn't really matter if you left that on there, but in my opinion, it's ugly, so I'm going to cut it off. And you don't have to cut far; you can just cut it off just enough so that it's not a nice one. Now that you can see we've washed these, we are going to take them and be very careful not to cut yourself. We're going to cut them long ways. Why? Because we're making boats. We're making Italian stuffed gondolas. So we are going to continue to take these and cut them down the center. And Denise, I'll let you continue with all of these. Now, while she is doing that, we are going to start with our stuffing. Certainly don't want to waste any time. So we're going to take our veal. And if you don't see any stuffed veal in your um, supermarket, don't be afraid to ask. Your supermarket is there to serve you in any way that they can, and the butcher has always been very kind to me. If you see a lot of veal everywhere, go up to your butcher and ask him. Say, I need some ground veal. Can you provide that for me? Sometimes they can't provide it right away, but usually by the next day they can. So I picked this up this morning. 
Now, that's our ground veal. And then here, we have, I want to take about half of this ground pork and about half of this ground beef. You want to have equal parts of all of the meats so that you don't have any kind of dominating flavor. I have got a freezer proof bag here and what I do is I simply transfer the beef and don't be afraid to touch it. I simply transfer it into a bag. I wash my hands very well. Never want to transfer E. coli or any kind of bacteria or germs that might be there. Now, also, we are going to use one egg in here. If you don't crack it in just the right spot, as silly as it sounds, you could end up with that stuff everywhere. And let me tell you, it is no fun trying to get eggshells out of whatever it is you're making. If you feel like you're going to, if you feel not, if you don't feel very confident and you feel like you might get some eggshells in there, break it into a small bowl and if you don't have eggshells or if you do, pick them out and then just transfer it into the bowl that you're using. And we are trying to keep cooking as simple as possible. And so I think that that entails having the grocery store do a little bit of your prep work for you. This can save you five minutes of your time. And every little bit adds up, in my opinion. So we're going to take this. We're going to we're going to turn up our heat to about medium high. We're going to use a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Recipes call for ve vegetable oil, extra virgin olive oil, all different kinds of oils. But studies have shown that extra virgin olive oil is the best olive oil for is the best oil out there for you. So I use it for everything and it never changes the quality of whatever it is that I'm cooking. So we want to let that warm up for a minute and then we're going to caramelize our onions. Now, Denise, this is what I want to show you. Okay. Or Marilyn. Which do you prefer? Probably Marilyn tonight. Marilyn. Here we go. As I was saying, I have two different gadgets. This is a just an amazing little thing. It makes it so simple to hollow hollow it out. Look at that. Five seconds and it's done. I'll show you one more. A little bit closer up. As you can see, this is specifically for squash. Getting the seeds out of a cantaloupe, getting the seeds out of a pumpkin. This is truly an amazing invention. Now, if you do not have one of those. They are they're, they run about six dollars and if you don't want to spend six dollars on a gadget like that I can totally understand. You can always use your melon baller. And you just ruin it. <laughs> but that's what cooking's all about. You don't always do everything exactly perfect. You want to make sure that you're not getting too deep and as you see, you practice. Practice makes perfect. And if you ruin one, so what? As you can see, we've still got plenty. These are going to serve 12 people. So if you can only serve 11 people, how often are you going to serve 11 people? Oh, well, there's always somebody you want to kick out anyway. That's true. <laughs> Poor Michael. He didn't know he was getting kicked out tonight. <laughs> so, this melon baller serves pretty much the same purpose, but as you can see, it is a little bit difficult to use. This, I think we're going to chunk in our little trash bag. But that's okay. Sometimes you got to make a mistake to figure out what works. So, Denise, I am going to give you this. Okay. Have you ever used one of these? No, I have not. So, let's see how, it e how easy it is. Am I holding it the correct way? Yes, ma'am. That was easier than I thought. And while you're doing that, I'm going to caramelize the onion. We used about a tablespoon of olive oil. Turned it up to about medium-high heat. 
let it let the oil get nice and warm. And then we add in the yellow onion. And as you can see, I make a mess. But that's what the kitchen's for. If you're not making a mess, I don't think you're having any fun. But ain't time to come out of there. I am just about done. Look at this. Putting a few things in the old garbage bag. We are going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. One thing you always want to make sure you do is check in your oven and make sure there is nothing in there. You never know when one of the kids is going to put something in there and they don't tell anyone. Next thing you know, you got the fire department at your house because your kids decided they wanted to make brownies. So we're almost done caramelizing these onions. It really doesn't take very long at all. When you start to see them go a little bit translucent and they're browning a little bit, that's about what you're going for. And also remember, when you're doing this, they're going to cook again in the oven. So to cook again in the oven, you don't have to really make sure they're perfectly caramelized. So Denise, how does it smell so far? It smells wonderful. I've always loved the smell of cooking onions. Even if they were making liver and onions, they'll smell really good. All right, I think that we have them. Um, they're about translucent enough. You don't want to get them too overdone so that they're kind of gooey when you bite into them. So we are going to take these and just put them right on in. Actually, we are going to put this back over here because we're going to use it again. We're going to use it again when we saute the red onions for our bruschetta pasta. Now, the purpose of the egg, I'm not sure if I told you before, the purpose of the egg is to create a binder. If you were to just put a whole bunch of meat together, it would fall apart and flake apart on your fork when you're eating it. Whereas if you use an egg, it will come together I don't want to say like a cake, but it's more uniform and it, it's just, to me, it's just got a much better texture. As you can see, I've got gadgets and appliances everywhere. I don't have room for a can opener up here. So this is about a cup. Now, I don't really measure anything, but... When I post these recipes on my blog online, you'll be able to see exactly how to do this, and yours will turn out just as well. I think that's probably about a cup right there. I'll tell you, y'all are so lucky. These are original recipes by Angela. You can't get these anywhere. All right. Now that looks a little bit soupy. So when you have something that looks a little bit soupy, you want to add about half a cup of breadcrumbs. And as you'll see, we start to end up with a consistency that can be scooped. And if it still seems to you like it's a little too runny, you can add more breadcrumbs, but I think that that looks great. We are adding oregano. I was very disappointed. I went to the grocery store. I was looking for fresh oregano. They did not have it. I prefer fresh herbs, but in a pinch, they'll do. I personally really like a lot of herbs, but this is something that is entirely a personal preference. So if you don't want as much as I have, that is really no big deal at all. You just add how much you want. And remember when you're adding this, the oregano can serve as 
something to thicken your stuffing as well. So don't add too many breadcrumbs before you decide to add some herbs. Now what we're going to do is add about a cup of mozzarella cheese. I love cheese, so I always add a little bit more. Shame on me. Now you know why my hips are the size they are. Now, Denise, what you can do is be cutting these up into bite-sized pieces. All right. Where are your knives, Angie? There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that about good? Uh-huh. Perfect. Now we are going to chop our fresh herbs. And I take out about a handful of basil. Ooh, that smells good. Mm. Let me ask you a question, Angela. Yes. How long do fresh herbs stay good? Fresh herbs, you know, honestly, it just depends on how cold your fridge is, whether or not you expose it to light. Um, just when you start to see it wilt, throw it away. Okay. I don't know that there's any kind of rocket science for it. Add that. So, now we have added our basil. After this, we're going to add our thyme and when you come back, we're going to be ready to stuff our gondolas. Aren't you excited? Denise. Yay! <laughs> We're going to get this girl excited one way or another. I'm Join us in five. All right, everybody. I apologize. We're having some technical glitches with our camera, but I just want you to know we've only spent about five minutes doing things that you missed out on, so no worries. What I've done this far is um, we are making our bruschetta pasta right now. And so to do this, I put about a cup of tomato sauce in here. I also use chopped tomatoes, an entire box of chopped tomatoes, and let me see here, it says it is 26 ounces, roughly. I also added fresh thyme, fresh, fresh basil, some oregano, and I also caramelized some red onions for this, and I added that in. Now, what I'm also going to add is over here, I have some minced garlic. Now, I don't know if you have a whole lot of experience with garlic, but if you touch it, your hands will smell like garlic for weeks. It's awful. Heard, it's terrible. And it just seems like no matter what you do, you can't get it off. So um, I've heard rub your hands around in a stainless steel bowl and use lemon juice. None of it works. So my recommendation to you is that you not even bother. Well, I guess you got to be smarter than the jar. So you... um. You really don't want to get this crap on your fingers, and uh, and really, it keeps for a very long time, and uh, it's just, it's much less of a hassle to deal with. Again, you want to put it in your trash bag. You don't want to just leave garlic lying around. I use about a heaping teaspoon, and then a, and then a, pot this size. That's pretty good. As you can see, I'm making a mess. Don't be afraid to make a mess in the kitchen. I cannot stand spaghetti. To be so long that I gotta wrap it and wrap it and wrap it and wrap it around my fork. So I cut it in half. Break it in half. She rubs. And I put it in. I also put about a tablespoon of olive oil in this water so that the noodles will not stick together. Now after you have the boiling water, very steady boil to it, you want to decrease the heat so that you don't have the water boiling over. And I know it sounds like it's boiling over, but it's really not as bad as it sounds. Alright, you want to make sure that you continue to stir it. I like to use a fork so that I can pick it apart. How long will those need to boil? Generally, you want to boil these for about 10 to 12 minutes, but honestly, I just look at it until it's done. When you start to see that it has kind of an opaque 
uh, yellowish color and you can take it and you can throw it against the wall and it sticks, it's done. And if your water is boiling over, then so what? Let your water boil over. We're going to go on ahead and finish this up and in about two minutes we'll be back to finish up all this and show you how to put it together. About to get back to those zucchini gondolas. But I wanted to let you know that we made the bruschetta pasta and this is crushed tomatoes, caramelized red onions, it is tomato sauce, garlic, basil, oregano, and thyme. And we also put in about an eighth of a cup of balsamic vinegar. Can't have bruschetta without balsamic vinegar. And we need a smell can because this smells great. Mm. You're right, you're right. We do need a smell can. Scratch and sniff. So, we're going to let this just kind of sit for a few minutes. Now, what we did with our stuffed baked zucchini gondolas is we took this stuffing over here. We left one out for you to see. What we're doing is with a spoon we are filling up the inside of our stuffed zucchini gondolas. Take another one. I don't know about you guys but I think this looks awesome. I know I'm hungry. Yes. I mean it just smells awesome in here. So this is how it looks when it goes into the oven. And as you can see, I have already put several into the oven at 350. And they will bake for about 40 minutes. So far they've been in there for about 5 minutes. So I'm going to go on ahead and start the timer. At 30 minutes. And you always want to err on the side of caution because all ovens are made differently. Some are calibrated to a little bit hotter and some a little bit cooler. And As you can see in my oven, I've got here a thermometer that tells me that it is in fact 350, but this oven still cooks differently than another oven that I had that was calibrated to 350 as well. So you always need to keep an eye out and you always need to kind of err on the side of caution and give yourself an extra five minutes to just kind of peek in and see how it's doing. Soufflés being the only exception to that rule. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit left over. So what we will do is just package this up and save it to stuff something else. You can stuff bell peppers, you can stuff tomatoes, you can stuff anything. But don't feel like we're stuffing zucchinis and that's the only thing you can stuff. We have got, we could go on the stuffing spray if we wanted to. So I'm going to take this and put it in here. And, I and it's always a good idea, something that I do. I get a piece of masking tape and I write on the top what it is and what the date is. So I could put, this is a veal, pork, and beef stuffing and put the date, which today is what, the 13th? I believe so. Mm -hmm. So Saturday the 13th. And I would put that on here and I would freeze it or put it in the fridge depending on when I plan on using it again. Oh. Okay, we are making tiramisu. Right now we have three egg yolks, three egg yolks, some vanilla, and it's not an exact science. A you know, splash or two. <laughs> Splashes. It's all about the splash. <laughs> then we have a quarter of a cup of sugar, just regular granulated sugar. And we are going to use our whisk and just whisk it around until you have a very light yellow color. Whisking, whisking! Alright, this is pretty light and fluffy. Yes, it should. Alright, now we are going to fold in the mascarpone cheese, as Rachel Ray would say. It is mascarpone. mascarpone. All right, now we're going to finish up our tiramisu. As you can see, I have already complete. I have already completed four of them. This is not the finished product of what it's going to look like, but it has to chill for an hour once you have completed putting it all together. Now, earlier this afternoon, 
I brewed two cups of very strong coffee. These are my lady fingers. And basically you just pour your coffee over your lady fingers and let it soak. Then you're going to take out a butter knife because they are connected. Go ahead and cut all those. All right. How long do you let them brew? Uh, the lady fingers? Yes. Um, they really don't have to brew at all because they're so soft, they absorb the coffee very quickly. Oh, spongy. Mm hmm. Now, let's take a look here. Ooh, those look so tasty. Yum. Tasty, tasty. We need that smell cam again. Yum, yum. These look great. Now, move the bruschetta pasta. So we are putting Parmesan cheese. Yay, Parmesan. Put extra cheese on mine. She is so high maintenance. Let me tell you. This coming from the kitchen, not so. But recipes can be modified. <laughs> the kitchen, not the yeah. If you do not have a torch, that is quite all right. All you have to do is stick it back in the oven until it melts, which is perfectly acceptable. Okay. And these are our baked zucchini gondolas. And I'm going to plate it up for you and show you what it looks like. As we said before, we poured coffee over the lady fingers. They are very moist little cookies, so they don't take long to soak up the coffee. Put about three in your individual dessert bowls. And once you have them in here, and this was after we folded uh, the mascarpone into the egg and sugar mixture. And you just leave that to refrigerate for an hour. And isn't that cute? I'm of the opinion that when you have a dinner party, you should have individual desserts for everybody because everybody wants to feel special. And even if adults don't care, little kids just really get a kick out of individual desserts. And as you can see, if you go over and you take a look at the table, you will see that we are, we are set up with our baked zucchini gondolas. We have our bruschetta pasta topped with Parmesan cheese. Becca also added mozzarella cheese. And we now are going to work on our cream, our Italian cream sodas. Now, we have, where's the cream soda? Oh, the, oh. I, I'm trying to be accommodating. Here we go. The assistant is being helpful. <laughs> Too helpful. It's Apparently. Cool. The blonde knows her way around the kitchen. She, she can be taught. Woohoo! All right. Now, what you want to do is you want to have about two ounces of your vanilla syrup. Now, I bought this at the Olive Garden. You can probably get it at Starbucks or you can get vanilla syrup pretty much anywhere, but I've had this at the Olive Garden before, so I knew it was really good. It's about $7 for the whole thing, and it will last you for many, many, many Italian cream sodas. So we're going to put in about, like I said, two ounces. Let's put in a little bit more. Then we're going to add some club soda. And then we are going to add for the rest of it half and half so that we have a nice vanilla creamy fizzy drink. Yummy. These are so good. I'm telling you, you are going to want to live off of these things. Why don't you stir that up really good and take a sip of it and let me know what you think. And in the meantime, I'll make another one. Is it good? Delicious. Oh, I'm so glad. There's left. Okay, so we have Italian cream sodas. We have tiramisu in the fridge. We have got our zucchini gondolas. We also have our bruschetta pasta with Parmesan cheese. Becca has also added mozzarella. You can have Merlot if you like, or you can have your Italian cream sodas. Hi there, my name is Angela McKellar. As you can see, we just completed the first episode of Kick Back and Cook. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Please join us for episode two so you can find out what the next gadget is going to be that we profile and also so you can get some more great tasty recipes. Thanks so much and I look forward to seeing you next time.